that ball. Remember Pro Radio with your host, Gen T. Fuck, I don't know what, what the fuck. Yeah, fuck it. Gen is a warlord. I'm fucking coming for you. Now I feel poo coming out of my bum. So it's, 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 like, it's a lot right now. Yeah, it's a lot. Welcome to episode 369. <laughs> Do you have any idea <laughs> how long I've been waiting <laughs> to just say that? 369. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another installment of Ramp Oprah Radio. I am terribly sorry as this podcast is so late it doesn't even count anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have been through the Gulag Hell Week, um, trying to sort of get my life together, or, or I was on the cusp of some life-changing things happening, and then, uh, <laughs> oh God, ah, we'll get into that, but uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram at GenT523, or for those of you who are complete Communists X <laughs> X <laughs> Man, do I have uh, a show for you? I'm gonna do my best. I am insanely tired, running on three hours of sleep. Been going since the time I uh, published this last episode. It has just been a complete roller coaster of things happening so fast and uh obviously you are going to get the tea uh first you've heard it here first i do my best not to say anything to anyone i, I wait to say things on here and then i verbally diarrhea and then publish and then i can go into all the details later but um uh, uh this week was interesting because uh you know uh like i had mentioned I was on the cusp of finding jobs, looking for jobs. And uh, uh, there was a job fair for the school district. And that school district was the place that I had applied uh, for last uh, school year. And it was for disabled students. And um, obviously, I don't have any teaching credentials, but uh, this position would be to assist the teacher with disabled kids. So that one, you only need high school. So I was like, perfect. I am the lady for the job. Um, so I went to the job fair, got all dressed up. You know, I I, 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 I had screwed up on my application. It was not initially accepted because I forgot to uh, attach my attachments, my, uh, my attachments, attach my transcripts digitally. So, um, I was like, man, that sucks. Um, but I didn't know that I could resubmit it. So I went to the job fair and, uh, I told them, I was like, Hey, I've already applied for this job. Um, I just didn't have my transcripts. I have them here today and I see all of these people with scanners. So I'm like, perfect. Y'all can scan my transcripts and hire me. <laughs> and so, um, uh, I, I, I go through the process, you know, and I was the night before I was like, you know, t tossing and turning in my sleep because I just thought, man, okay, there's going to be like four or five people who want this job. And, um, I'm sure they will be much more qualified than I will. Um, but I believe I can still get this job. You know, they gotta be hiring at least 
one, if not two. They got to hire at least two of us, right? So I was like, two out of four ain't bad. I like my odds. So I showed up to the job fair about uh, 30 minutes early and got there. And there was, there was, there was 30 fucking people all in line for the job that I wanted. I went, we do <laughs> Because uh, they had, you know, different stations where the different jobs were at. And nobody was at any other station but the disabled teacher's aid one. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. What are the fucking chances that everybody wants this job? And then uh, I looked because I forgot how much they were paying. Uh, you start at 23 an hour. And depending on your experience, you can make up to 27 an hour. And I was like, <gasps> With a high school education? Fuck yeah. No wonder there's fucking bunch of people in this line. Everybody wants this job because it pays good money. So I was like, ooh, this is fantastic. Uh, I might not get this job. <laughs> so I went through the process. And then, of course, I forgot some other pivotal information. So luckily, this place was not that far away from my house. So I had to drive home, get this other paperwork, come right back. And then get back in line, a long ass line. But I was determined. I was just like, no, I need this job. I need this job. I have to have this job. I need this job. Don't deny me. I am awesome. Come on, motherfuckers. What the hell? <laughs> and um, everything was cool. I was like, they had different stations where different people would talk to you and tell you things. And uh, it was like little random mini interviews. And so I felt like, I was like, okay, I'm doing okay. I'm saying hello to everybody. I'm nervous as hell, but I'm like, hello, hello. This could be my, my future boss or, or this could be a teacher I'm working for. So be on your best behavior. Be extra specially nice. Even though I'm already nice, I was extra specially nice. Um, even though I was running on three hours of sleep and was tired and didn't want to say hi to everybody I saw, just be nice. So I was just like, fake it till you make it, fake it till you make it. We can do this. We can do this. We're awesome. I just told myself over again, over and over again, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I can do this. Uh, this job is mine. And so each station I went to, more people were pumped on me. And I was like, cool. This is awesome. I'm like making it. It was like the amazing race. I was like, cool. Every station, solve the puzzle, talk to some people, scan some papers, move on to the next station. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm cruising. Okay. I think I've got this. So, um, I go to uh, the second to the last station. I meet the head of the, the HR for the school district. I'm like, cool. Cool. She already knows where I work at. I love that store. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. You, If you get this job, which if you pass the fingerprint, if you get this job, you're going to start August 5th. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm out of here, bitches. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know, I was already doing the happy dance, doing all my stuff. So I get to the last station. Okay, so by now at this station, we went from like 50 fucking people to like, uh, there's like maybe 10 of us left. Okay. And I'm like, cool. I'm at the last station. Fingerprint stage. If I pass the background test, I'm hired. Okay. So as I'm at the fingerprint station, I overhear the lady talking about the position just one more time. And she's like, yeah, so um, this is substitute on call. So we'll call you. If you pass the background chest, we'll call you. You'll start August 5th. And I was like, wait, 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 what? Substitute on call? Whoa, 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 whoa. I specifically said in my application, uh, I'm looking for full-time work. So as the fingerprint lady is like, yo, uh, before you take my fingerprints, um, I just overhear you tell this lady this is like substitute and on call position. And she's like, yeah, so um, we're going to fingerprint you. And then uh, if you pass a background test, we'll call you and you'll start August 5th. And I was like, um, but, but, but I need full time. And she goes, yeah, so sometimes if you uh, become a substitute, on call, um, you'll get first dibs at being a callback for the full time position. And I was like, but uh, I already, I already have a job. 
She goes, ooh, yeah, so you would have to decide if you want to give up the job you have now to be on call. And I was like, well, uh, the job I have now is guaranteed this many hours a week. You can't even guarantee me this many hours a week, even a phone call. I was like, I'm sorry, what? And she goes, yeah, um, we would just call you when we need you. And I was just like, oh, okay, um, okay, thanks. Um, she's like, well, if you change your mind, here's my card. And I was like, thanks. I was just like, wow, fucking two, not even two hours, two hours just going through talking to all these people at different stations, uh, uh, excelling, people liking me, people talking to me, uh, telling me I'm going to start in this date and they're so excited for me to work. And I'm just like, I'm excited to work for you too. And I, I, I want to uh, be able to go to jujitsu because I'll be done with work by three o'clock. <laughs> uh, oh man, I won't be so broke. <laughs> oh man. And I was like, damn. She's like, yeah, um, well, if you change your mind and you want to be a substitute, just give me a call. And I was like, thanks. So the two hours and change I wasted there, the uh, $75 I wasted going and collecting transcripts from all of my schools that I've gone to because I went to fucking four or five different colleges because I was on academic probation because I sucked at school. I was like, oh, and just having to go through and, and, and relive the trauma of, of like, hey, you sucked at school. Here's your, here's your uh, uh, transcript. Hey, you didn't graduate. Here's your transcript. Hey, 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 hey. Damn it, man. Damn it. So I just I had to like fucking psych myself up for that. And then when I did it, I was like, you know what? This is for the, this is for the greater good. I can do this. So what? This is what they need. Maybe if they like my personality uh, and they believe that I can work hard, like uh, the school stuff won't matter. So um, I was just like, okay, just go get it. Just go get this transcripts. Just go back to school. Just go back to school. A place where uh, you went to a private school and it was not okay to be gay. Uh, go back to a school where uh, women would, I, 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 I just don't, I don't even understand it to this day. It was so bizarre. A lot of these women at school had boyfriends, but they were hanging out with me after school and uh, uh, just being. Terrible good things, but now looking back at them, I'm like, oh, this is terrible behavior. Um, <laughs> bad, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry we weren't breaking any laws or anything or at least one of them but looking back at it I'm like man mm, I was so in love with some of these girls and they all had boyfriends this is just bad all bad so um anywho I was just like man just replaying all of that just fucking terrible trauma uh but I got it done I was like fuck you uh you're the past I'm trying to build a better future I gotta get this done Fuck you. Sorry. And um, so just going through all of that and then just to get to that moment, it's like, oh, sorry, this isn't what you wanted. I mean, you're hired, but this isn't actually the position you wanted. So, uh, yeah, see you later. I'm like, great. Fuck. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I walked out of there. I was just like, I, I wanted to yell so loud, but we're in the hood and it wouldn't mattered because... Other people are already yelling. <laughs> I was just like so devastated. Uh, thank God I had jujitsu right after that because I, I was just like, I was just, I was heartbroken. I was just like, man, all of that effort, all of that, um, telling myself you suck, and then and then overcoming like, no, I don't suck. I'm awesome. I can do this. I can get this job. Uh, I rule. And if they don't like me or they don't pick me for this job, uh, then it's not meant to be. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I fucking got it. I got to the fingerprint part, man. And I know I'm going to pass a background check unless somebody's like 
totally messing with my files or maybe one of one of my uh, 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 former lady friends works for the police department and is like, fuck Jen. <laughs> Just messing with my files. But I was like, Jesus Christ, like, I got the job. And before I could even like really start to celebrate, it was like, oh, have a seat. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Oh, man. I was just like, fuck. I really, really, really needed that job because it was perfect. The correct amount of pay for my time. All of the holidays off. Summer off. Um, what else? Retirement. Um, medical, dental, vision. Retirement. Um, let's see. What else? Um, I would have been able to go to jujitsu every day. I was super pumped on that. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Helping cool kids. Um, damn. Yeah. I was, I was just like, man, this fucking sucks. This really fucking sucks. And now I'm just like, cool. Back to square one. Don't know what to do again. But... In the process of doing all of that, uh, I saw on Instagram this week uh, one of these uh, jujitsu coaches I follow, Tom DeBlass, who is um, Gordon Ryan's like first jujitsu coach. Before John Donaher, there was Tom DeBlass, and um, Tom DeBlass uh, used to like manage ADCC or, or like help like with the brackets and all of that stuff. So he's like a legitimate jujitsu guy. He's in the know. Uh, a lot of his videos go viral because he's posting anti-bullying videos. And, um, he was on Instagram talking about how people were telling him like, dude, Tom, you post way too much. How come you're always posting so much? And, um, he said, it's very simple. Um, the more I post, the more engagement I get, I get money. I get paid to post. And when I saw how much money he makes just from posting, I was like, um, wait a minute. This guy makes more money than me from posting on his phone multiple times a day uh, than I make in two weeks. So in 80 hours, it takes me 80 hours to make the same amount of money that Tom was making in like uh, – a week, I think it was like either five days or seven days worth of just constantly posting stuff and getting people engaged. I was like, <gasps> I'm like, this is where is that social media? I and and I hate I hate social media so fucking much. I mean, I love silly videos, but all the other stuff that comes with it, it's just like people get depressed over it. It's just there's shit that they. Some people post on there that you shouldn't fucking see. I, I I just, I avoid it like the plague as much as possible. I'm thinking like I should be outside living my life, you know, whoop de fucking whoop. No, turns out you got to post every fucking single thing. Everything you're doing on there because Instagram going to pay you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, damn it, man. Damn it. Sounds like fuck. Maybe I need to like rededicate myself to just posting more on social media and seeing what happened. I mean, one of my posts that I've posted uh, over a month ago has like 2,000 shares. So we're getting up there. And I think I'm at close to 5,000. No, no 5,000. Maybe like 2,500 likes, I think. I know it's uh, it's uh, it's up there. It's getting up there. It's like really, really, really going at it, and I cannot believe that it's happening. Uh, but uh, they're like, "Oh, you've done this new thing. Oh, you've set the bar for this." And whoop, you fucking move. I'm like, "Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter to me." But now that Tom was like, "Yo, the more you post on here, um, the more eyes you get on here, and the more eyes you have, then you get paid." And I was just like, "Oh my god, uh, I need some monies." <laughs> and it's really like I don't even need a whole lot of money per se. I just need something to replace my work so I can go to jujitsu. I I don't I don't I don't care. <laughs> um but it definitely has to be more than what I'm making now because there's plenty of uh jobs available that do not pay. They pay even worse than my job. I'm like, holy shit. Man, holy moly, man, this is this is abysmal. So 
I'm doing all right, but I, I just, I'm trying to get to excellence. I'm trying to get to the best, the best version of me and the highest version of myself is, is jujitsu. I just know that that's where I'm trying to go. And so the one thing that's in my way is work <laughs> and work pays for jujitsu. So I'm like, fuck, if I can find a way to make up the money that, um, not wouldn't you know that it would be getting at work by not going to work and that's through social media like holy shit maybe i need to look into fucking posting all the time um i remember i used to post so fucking much it would annoy me i would post like three four times a day it was getting crazy and then i was just like eh we're good well oh they changed the algorithm and i was like cool i'm out like this is this is retarded i don't know how to even talk to people when i'm seeing their posts from five days ago or from May, like this is terrible. Absolutely atrocious. Put it back in chronological order. Por favor. <laughs> uh, but um, now, so I'm just like, all right, cool. I guess I just got to be posting a whole bunch of fucking videos on Instagram or YouTube or something. And somebody's going to pay me. <laughs> uh, 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 cross my fingers. <laughs> so going through all of that, just being on this, emotional roller coaster and um ups and downs highs and lows and just being like just fuck i had this job and then i didn't you know i'm back to square one i roll up into work and um i've got this coworker. this bitch well <laughs> god bless her little heart <laughs> Um, I'm sure at some point in her life she was nice because she ain't now. Um, I've tried. I've I've really fucking tried to. Um, hmm, damn. I've tried to be nice. I've gone out of my way because I've sensed that there is some sort of bad energy going on, and she just has the worst attitude for no fucking reason. This. Um, you know, because everybody's going through some shit, right? Um, but you know, when we come to work, we all kind of just pull it together and it's a hang. We got a family vibe with the exception of a few branches. We got a legit family tree going on. And unfortunately, she's the one branch that is just like, nah, I'm going to be prickly, annoying, rude, mean as possible. This and so I walked into work and uh, I was like, oh, uh, good morning. And even though I say good morning to her and she never says good morning back to me. I don't think I've ever done anything to her other than say hello. Nice to meet you. Can I help you out with this? Um, thank you. Um, good morning. Yeah, just that, and I get the cold shoulder. I get. <laughs> all right. <laughs> This bitch Or nothing at all So I'm like okay Whatever So I walked into work And uh, said good morning to her Knew she wasn't gonna say it back So I just kept on walking I didn't even wait The last time I think it was back in April I said good morning to her When she was walking in And she just looked at me and laughed So I was just like alright Cool This bitch <laughs> So um I said good morning to her and kept it moving. Kept the headphones on, kept it moving. And um, uh, apparently she is no longer doing the position she was doing within the company. And I'm not surprised because she sucked at it. She sucked big donkey dicks. And, uh, you know, part of her job is to be nice to people. And she can't even pretend to be nice to people. So it's like I'm not surprised that... Uh, you got tired of people telling you that you're terrible at your job. So, uh, she stepped down from her position. God bless it. Arriva Darchi. Jog off. This bitch. She is just a regular ass worker now. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> you my bitch now. <laughs> I don't have to do a damn thing you say at all. Um, so how does it feel to be a regular ass person again? You bitch! <laughs> this bitch! Um, you know, I was just like, oh. I looked at the schedule and didn't see her with her little fancy title anymore. I was like, oh, okay, whatever, girl. Bye. And, um, you know, just did my own thing. Talked to everyone else around her. 
had a good time, laughed it up. And, uh, you know, it came time for me to go to lunch. And uh, unfortunately, I had to go through her line. And, uh, you know, I waited. I was like, fuck, I'm on my lunch. I don't have a whole lot of time. I got to do things. I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. She's the only one open. Fuck, here we go. So I was like, hey, how's it going? And she didn't say a word to me. This bitch. Got my stuff. And then, um, so I paid for my stuff. She still didn't say anything to me. And then as I'm walking away, she goes, oh, did you want your receipt? And I was like, yeah, thanks. Bye. This bitch. I was just like, I don't know what your fucking problem is. I've actually offered to help her uh, come to jiu-jitsu class. I've offered to give her self-defense lessons. Uh, I've offered words of encouragement to her. And, and um, you know, I have just been nothing but dogged out by her several times. And um, so I guess one of the times that she decided to ignore me, she actually got in trouble. So I, I didn't even report her. Um, somebody else noticed and reported her. So and I'm thankful for that person because I wasn't even going to say anything because I don't even think it's worth it, to be honest with you. But somebody else said it's something and got her as reported. So whatever. Uh, she's mad at me about it. So um, comes time for the end of her shift and she goes, wow, you know, it's so nice leaving at four o'clock. Bye. And me and one other coworker were like, this bitch, this bitch, like, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Like what? I just don't like that. She was like trying to rub it in like, oh, I'm leaving early. I'm like, girl. Um, we don't care. <laughs> I have some news for you, Jalosa. We don't care. Nobody gives a flying fuck. This bitch. At four o'clock, or if you're leaving at 10 o'clock, bitch, nobody cares. Because she's so mean, people are just like, oh, thank God. She's out of here. <laughs> So me and my other coworker are like, uh, okay, bye. Like, whatever, like, talk. Like, if your attitude was better, like, maybe people would be interested in talking to you, communicating with you, befriending you. But no, she has to be a bitch-ass bitch, a, uh, what does my man Cartman say? Uh, a king commandment, bitch. <laughs> this bitch is mean as fuck. And, you know, I talked to her about it, and she's like, you know what? Honestly, I'm she admitted to being mean to people because she's like people have been mean to me, so I just have to be mean back to them. I just it's it's my defense mechanism and I was like, "Okay, that's a whack ass excuse, but okay, contuber." This bitch. I was like, "But nobody in this place has been mean to you." She's like, "You know, you're right. Uh it was in my past people were mean to me, so I'm just mean to people first to protect myself." And I was like, "Okay, well cool. Well, we don't have to be bosom buddies in here, but at least everyone in here is somewhat cordial." Um so it's okay. Just be cool. <laughs> just chill. But no, this girl is just like 24/7 resting bitch face, mean, mean to customers, mean to staff. I, I, I'm just like, girl, just leave. Just leave. This bitch. Don't be jealousa, okay? Nobody likes jealousa, okay? There's nothing for you to be upset about. You know, I get it. People have problems. Um, things are happening. Um, we've all got problems, okay? So if you think somebody's life is better than yours, it's not. It's okay to be human and let your guard down, even if it's for a moment. Like, at least I know, damn, you're not a fucking robot. Like, this bitch is a straight up like, Boo! three, six, nine, robot time. <laughs> I'm just like, girl, I, I, I don't understand. The logic is quite astounding. So I was just like, damn. All right, Ma, if that's your thing, you want to be mean, then don't be surprised that the world is mean back to you. Just saying. Um, then later on that day, uh, I got a frantic call from Big Bear Lake. Uh, how can I help you? Yes, um, I was wondering, do you have any, um, 
uh, products for ancestral cleaning. I need to detoxify my body from my evil ancestors. And I was like, this bitch. What the fuck are you talking about, lady? What are you saying? Yes. I I'm I need to detox myself from from uh, my my ancestor my ancestors some of them are evil and it's causing great uh, uh gastrointestinal upset and I need to detox and I'm just like oh, please hold oh, bitch no 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 <laughs> this bitch <laughs> <laughs> No, no, mommy, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I was like, damn, it ain't even White People Wednesday yet, man. No. What? <laughs> She's like, I was wondering if you have some, some, uh, um, some sage and some milk thistle and some trifala. I need to detox my, my body and my home from my evil ancestors. An ancestral detox. And I was like, mm, well, we have some sage and some milk. So I never heard of nobody doing what you're doing, but it's here. She's like, oh, I'll be there in two hours. <laughs> and so old girl pulls up and she's got some fucking just wicked homemade clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> These clothes look like they were fucking made out of fucking. <laughs> she looked like she came from Little House on the Prairie, Jack. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I was like, damn, mom, you just hopped into DeLorean, <laughs> and you're from the past. <laughs> She straight up went to the year 2024, yo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're here from Back to the Future Part 3. <laughs> Goddamn Laura Ingalls. <laughs> What's up, Helen Keller? <laughs> I mean, this bitch has some weird old hands made tail dress on. <laughs> Trying to do some ancestral cleanse. I was like, this bitch need to come back tomorrow when it's white people Wednesday. <laughs> this is unacceptable on Taco Tuesday, okay? Oh shit. So um we get all this stuff for her and then she starts going, Oh, oh, yes, this is this is for um an ancestral detox from my gastrointestinal tract because my evil ancestors are are attacking me and my my gastrointestinal tract and all of a sudden you hear (laughs) (laughs) I was like what (laughs) oh no mommy no 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 oh (laughs) she didn't say excuse me not one time this lady starts Blowing pedals like right away after she gets her stuff, she's like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was like, Lord, this is why you keep me here at this job. <laughs> Ancestral detoxes, Jesus Christ. I was like, lady, you need to go to the emergency room. Farts are not supposed to smell like that, man. And secondly, you need to say, excuse me. What the hell? Oh, my God. Uh, And then after that, they just, I about almost lost my shit on this woman. I mean, she was just pushing the boundaries of my patience far and beyond the depths of infinity and forever times a million. Um, so she came in. She's like, yeah, so I'm like super stressed out. Um, do you guys have like some products that um are like for stress? And I was like, um, yeah, we have some of these products here. And, you know, I start, you know, recommending 
to her what is popular, what people are continuously buying and things that I've tried as well, too. And then she just busts out. She has two cell phones. I got two phones, one for the blood and one for the low. She got fucking two phones. I'm like, okay, this bitch is a drug dealer straight up. Um, <laughs> she pulls out her second phone and then just starts playing like, if I was you, I want up on me too. Just starts playing fucking Megan Trainer at max volume. Okay, while I'm consulting her about stress, and she's like, I know you lie. Uh, your lips are moving. And I was like, girl, girl, hey. I was like, um, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to compete. With Megan Trainer right now, could you turn it down? She's like, yes, I can turn it down just a little bit, but like listening to pop music keeps me calm. But I was hoping to get a supplement with um, amino acid and thinning and GABA in it because I'm stressed. I know you're not. Uh, your lips are moving. I was like, girl, girl, I, um. I'm like, what? And I'm like trying to stay calm, but I'm just like in shock. I'm like looking at her. I'm like, I don't think it's stress. I think you're actually a legitimate crazy person. (laughs) Either that or your ancestors need to be detoxified out of your guts right now. (laughs) If I was you, I want to be too. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, this can't, this cannot be happening. This cannot be happening. I don't. What is going on here? I just was like looking around to see if I was like getting punked or America's Funniest Home Videos because she was just blasting pop music. And then on top of that, the other phone that she had, she was on hold for the doctor's office, but like. They had picked up, and they were like, hello, hello. And then she's just like, oh, hey, uh, I'm trying to talk to Dr. So-and-so. And they're like, please don't. And they just kept putting her on hold. And I bet because they heard fucking music and her talking, and they're just like, not this bitch again. <laughs> we'll just put her on hold till she hangs up. <laughs> Give up. Stop calling. We don't have any more pills for you. <laughs> so I was, like, I was like, okay, uh, well, just so happens that one of the products that I have tried has some of the ingredients that you're looking for. Here it is. She goes, uh, yes, oh, this looks great. I think I'm going to try this one. And she goes, um, actually, um, you know, I, I actually like this one. It's like the same brand of what you recommended, but in a gummy farm. <laughs> I was just like, ma'am, uh, there's a reason I did not recommend the gummy form because they're giving you less of a dose. It's pretty much just fucking candy. And she goes, oh, okay. And then, like, puts it in her fucking basket anyway. So it's like, all right, cool. You're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. You're blasting pop music as loud as you fucking possibly can on top of me trying to talk to you and, and consult you. You had a question for me. I'm trying to help you. What's not helping is Megan Trainer right now. <laughs> She's like, um, I'm still looking for these ingredients. So maybe you could show me in another place. And I was like, yep, here they are. And she goes, mm, mm, those don't look like the ones that I bought last time. Um, is there somebody else that works here? I need somebody that knows. And I was just like, really, bitch? Really? Oh, really? You! You! Motherfucker! Cocksucker! I was like, bitch, there is nobody fucking here. We're short-staffed. One guy's on break. One guy's on lunch. You got me, bitch. You got me! She's like, uh... Um, okay, well, never mind. I'll just try and find it myself. <laughs> if I was you, I would have been me too. I would have been me too. <laughs> I was like, I, I have to get away. And then when I see my other coworker, I was like, bro, bro, bro. You got to help me find him. I was like, you need to help this lady before I kill her. Okay, straight up. I'm going to snap her neck. <laughs> you need to get over here now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? And I was like, 
But uh, brother, I'm telling you right now, if you don't get over here, I'm gonna choke this bitch out. So I need your help. Get over here, help me. And uh, he's like, okay. So then he's trying to help her. She doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. And she goes, ah, so what do you think about these gummies? Your coworker recommended them. And he's like, oh, I wouldn't take those gummies. It's like, that's what I thought. I don't know why she tried to recommend these to me. And I was like, um, excuse me, Emma. No, I did not. I said, I recommended the capsule version of that formula. I said, I did not recommend the gummies. And I told you why. But because your radio was so fucking loud, you didn't hear me say that you get half the dose with the gummies. The gummies just like a sweet treat. She's like, oh, <laughs> it's okay. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just get that capsule. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm just like ready to rest out right now. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, I was like, bitch, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, dude, what the fuck was that? I asked my coworker, I was like, what the fuck was that? And he was just like, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> we had no fucking clue what just happened. It was just like, the crazy bus parked in our parking lot and all of them got off at one time. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm. Man, so it's been a week since uh, Brother Trumpito was shot and uh, and this week in the season finale of America. <laughs> Did you see they're digging up my man's porno history? Like, come on. I... I Listen, what he was jacking it to isn't going to matter, okay? He tried to kill former President Trump. Y'all need to get to the bottom of that. Y'all need to be asking his parents, yo, did you beat this kid with a belt? Did you beat him too hard? Maybe you didn't beat him enough? I don't know. But my man didn't have no friends. What 20-year-old doesn't have friends? We need to start asking them kind of questions, not like, oh, so we finally got into his phone and uh, this is what he was jacking it to. Like, I'm sorry, what? Everybody knows when you jack it, you're going to sleep right after, okay? You're not going to go commit mass murder, okay? <laughs> <laughs> why are you telling me this man's porno history? You need to give me the answers about why this even happened to begin with. Somebody's porn search is not going to tell me why this fool tried to shoot DT. That's just... I, I, I don't understand. Uh, wait, let me get my shoes. <laughs> Ooh, three, six, nine. Let me get my shoes. <laughs> oh, man. I just, it, this whole fucking thing is wild to me. I mean, I have questions. If, if I know, because I'm around young people, and uh, if, I can, if I pick up on a sense of uh, incel, like you are a woman hater, or uh, you have like high school shooter tendencies. If I pick up on that, I'm gonna befriend you. You know why? Because I want you to remember I'm the one who was nice to you. <laughs> Please don't shoot me. When you come back to shoot up the place, you're gonna let me leave. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, if I catch that vibe with certain people, I'm I'm on it. You know what I'm saying? So this guy looking at his pictures, I'm like, bro, bro, holy shit, brother! You need to come and take a striking class with yours truly, Coach Jen. I would whoop your ass into shape, and not even just like physical shape, like mentally shape, because you could tell. You can tell by the shape of this man's head. He got one of them little like football heads with the little his like hairlines too far back. Um, you're going to be mad at the world. <laughs> and we need to protect individuals who have football heads. <laughs> we need to go out of our way and take care of people with Hey Arnold heads. <laughs> Hey Arnold! <laughs> I was like looking at this fool's pictures. I'm like, oh my god, y'all can tell this is like the school shooter profile, man. And then y'all let him have a gun. I mean, 
<laughs> it's like giving <laughs> it's like giving crack to a crackhead. Like, what do you think they're gonna happen? They're gonna smoke it, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't imagine when uh, the stork was at the factory and, and making his kid, and they're just like, <laughs> football head, check. Teeth uh, an inch <laughs> apart, check. Incel, check. <laughs> no friends, check. Uh, <laughs> perfect. We made a school shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to hell for that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I mean, you know, I had a homie who was like this. Actually, I I have a few homies who are like this and who are still like this. And um, without telling them to their face, I'll just say it here on this podcast and maybe they can get upset at me later or whatever, or they don't even listen to my show. Perfect. Um, when y'all ready for a style makeover, you know, just let's get it together. Let me, you know, I have a terrible time getting women, but at least I know what attracts women is you got to have a good haircut. If you got a football head, you can't be sporting the little part in the middle. You can't have that hairstyle, okay? Because you're accentuating the football headness. <laughs> 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 you gotta ditch the Coke bottle glasses and get some contacts. Um, we gotta uh, put some weight on you. We gotta get you in the gym. You start lifting weights. Holy shit. This is what's gonna happen, okay? Let me tell you something right now. You, if you are a nerd, you are an incel like yours truly. If you start going to the weight, you, you start hitting the weights. You go to the gym. I promise you, you do this religiously for three days a week. For six fucking months, you will be a changed man or woman. I promise you. I promise you. You start hitting the gym three days a week, weight training, three days a week, and you do cardio whenever you want, but six days a week. Six days a week, cardio, three days a week, weight training. You will become the best version of yourself. You will start to see the best version of yourself appear. Okay? And you don't want to hurt people because you're like, oh, damn. Look at my biceps. Oh, damn. I lost 25 pounds. Oh, damn. I lost 50 pounds. Oh, damn. People notice me now. I feel good about myself. I'm going to keep this up. See, going to the gym isn't just about your appearance. That is nice. But it's also about your, your mental health. And this cat. You can tell by just looking at his shot up body <laughs> um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, minus the bullet holes, <laughs> he, he, he was looking a little scrawny. He was looking a little undesirable. So I'm like, my guy, these are things that can be fixed. You know, we can't fix your football head. OK, we can't fix the hairline. This is what you were born with It's way the fuck back there. So maybe either shave the head or do a mohawk or a mullet, something, something kind of trendy. Then let's get you in the gym. Let's get you some jujitsu classes. Let's get you to a boxing class or Muay Thai or, or left way or, or uh, 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 Aikido or uh, uh, Kung Fu or uh, uh, fucking <laughs> judo, something, man. Some sort of hobby that instills mental and physical discipline and restraint. Because let me tell you, there are times where I'm ready to open a can of whoop ass. I just told y'all, my coworker is downright disrespectful to my face. I want to open a can of whoop ass, but I can't. Because I'm like, you got to sign the release form first, bitch. <laughs> I don't want you to sue me. <laughs> But most importantly, like, for what? You already know you're going to beat the dog shit out of this lady, right? You already know that she can't fight. You already know that it's all a facade, that this person is, has, people have been so mean to her that she feels the right to just be mean to everybody else. She won't give nobody a chance because she don't want to get hurt. Cool. 
if this bitch would go to a gym, if this two, matter of fact, I could probably hook up my coworker with that little feller, but he did. <laughs> <laughs> I would say y'all two need to go on a date together. Y'all can be miserable together. <laughs> but he did. Sorry, girl. <laughs> um, but my point is, it's just like, where were your parents? You're 21, you're, you're 20 years old. Okay. But where were your parents? Not around to instill discipline in you. Um, you don't have to get spanked to know better, but just that your parents were around or that they gave you some sort of program or some sort of thing like, hey, you know what? It's not cool to shoot at people ever unless they're attacking you, physically attacking you. They're going to be causing bodily harm to you. So this is used as self-defense. It is never to be used any other time. Where was that conversation? I'm curious. I'm pretty sure it didn't happen. Because old boy was just like, eh, see, eh, uh, the world hates me. I hate the world. I'm just going to shoot people. Like, My man said bombs in the car. He's going to shoot DT and then blow up the event. And I'm just like, man, what a sad, sad young man. 20 years old. Brother, you had... You could have had 70 good years in your, under your belt, man. But you're dead. You're fucking dead. Why? You're, why? I want to know why. And we're, and we're probably never going to know why. Um, because everything that's coming out now is like, okay, if my man didn't have friends, then why are you talking to all these people and be like, yo, I was his friend and he did this. Like, bro, everybody just said he was a loner. He didn't have no friends. So I don't believe you. How do y'all know this cat? If he was alone all the time. Y'all just know that he's a loner. That's it. You don't know nothing else about him. Um, I was like, man, I feel like anybody who's willing to go to this extreme to cause harm to other people really had some fucked up shit happen to him. Really had some fucked up shit happen to him. And uh, it bums me out that, you know, somebody couldn't reach out and get to this kid in time before he made, you know, the worst mistake of his life. And, and that's what happened. Um, but I feel, like I said earlier, it, despite the whole school shooter thing or mass murder thing or whatever, the point is, if I catch a vibe that there's somebody who's just kind of been left behind or abandoned by the tribe, if you will, or community, I want to know why. I want to know why you're by yourself. Anytime in jujitsu, I see somebody sitting alone because we got a couple kids where I don't know what's going on. Um, my man's is... His jujitsu is coming along a little bit slower than others. But for some reason, not a whole lot of people want to roll with him. Okay. I will roll with him because the more he rolls, the better he's going to get. And it doesn't make sense for him to be sitting against the wall, staring at the ceiling. So I'm like, dog, let's go. I don't want to see you sitting against the wall. Let's go. I let him work. I let him attack me because he needs to learn because he's not learning just sitting there against the wall, waiting for somebody to pick him. It's just horrible. I'm like, dude, I hate seeing you sitting over here just staring at the wall. Come on, let's go roll. Or if I'm at work and I see somebody who's having a moment, I let them have their moment. And I'm like, hey, everything good? Hey, bro, we're going to make it. I know, we, I know we can make it. Just that, just that. I don't have to go into specifics. I don't want to get in your business. But I'm just like, I feel compelled to motivate people to to, to push through. Times are tough. We're all going through it. But if we push through, if we see it through to the end, we're going to make it. I really believe we're going to make it. Uh, I did not, I mean, I did get the job, but it wasn't the position I wanted. Um, but I'm still going to see it through to the end. I'm still going to check my email and see maybe that, you know, the opportunity will arise and they will hire me full time. Um, maybe another opportunity will arise and I will become, uh, 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 I will make money through social media. Great. Awesome. Uh, another thing I did, I posted on my coaching page. I haven't posted on my coaching page in like since December of last year. Um, and I just let people know like, Hey, um, I'm still here. I'm giving out private lessons. Y'all want some schedule an appointment. It's that simple. Um, I just, kind of took a break from my coaching thing because I was 
pretty devastated when my my business partner left. Like, there really wasn't any warning. It was just like, hey, so I'm leaving. And I was just like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why didn't you tell me a little bit sooner instead of, like, a day after you left? Like, I'm like, what? I'm like, okay. So I was just, I was just like, I felt betrayed. Uh, I, I was upset. And then I accidentally said some things to her that I, I deeply regret. It wasn't my intent to, to hurt her feelings. Um, but it was, I was running on two hours of sleep and I slipped up and said some things that I probably shouldn't have said. I should have kept them to myself. Um, but you guys know me. Uh, I'm the, I'm the, uh, a queen with a K <laughs> of saying terrible things. <laughs> so our relationship is mm, very minimal. We hardly talk to each other. So, and it sucks, you know, cause we went from talking every day to hardly anything, just a couple words here and there. And, um, yeah, it's just like that really bummed me out. And I'm like, fuck, like this was it. This was supposed to be my way out. Like, we were going to do this business thing together, and we were going to kill it. We were going to help ladies. We were going to teach them how to protect themselves. This is awesome. And so when she left, I was like, fuck, well, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Um, but as time has gone on, time is passing, you know, you can't get that other time that I wasted back. But with me just kind of sitting and thinking about the idea and other people telling me, they're like, you know more martial arts than she does anyway. You're not fucked. Matter of fact, you don't fucking need her. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I was like, well, you guys don't understand. Like, she's really good at doing the promotional stuff. She's really good at doing the business side of that. I don't know any of that. I'm just good at teaching people the technique. And so they were like, it's not that hard. You can probably teach yourself how to do it. You don't need her. Move on. And I was just like, fuck. I've got no excuses. I've got no excuses. So I'm like, you know what? If this is something I really, truly want to do, and this is my end goal, why not start now? Why not start asking people, hey, you need a private lesson from me for Muay Thai, uh, for Jiu Jitsu? Um, hit me up. So I was just like, fuck it. This is the day. I'm posting. I'm checking. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because, you know, it sucks my business, my business partner is, is no longer with me, but things move on, things evolve. And um, for my future, I have to push forward. I have to tell myself that it's going to be okay. And um, because it, it, because it is going to be okay. I'm not just telling myself that it's going to be okay and, and it's not. Um, there's going to be moments of darkness. I totally understand that. Um, but I know, like I said earlier, I know if I push through and see it to the end, it's going to be okay. Speaking of being okay, <laughs> I went to go get a smog check the other day, which is the biggest racket ever. I mean, come on, getting a smog? Fuck off. Uh, you're just making people get smogs because uh, mechanics had to buy these stupid smog machines. I mean, it's just the whole thing is a racket, California. Jesus Christ. Went to go get a smog and uh, this old man, you know, <laughs> he's an older gentleman, sweet guy. I went uh, last Friday and uh, he said, we do not a smog until at 10 a.m. And I was like, oh, OK, well, it's 10 a.m. now. And he goes, yeah. We do not a small guy at 10 a.m. We're on a lunch. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll uh, be back. He's like, yeah, come back later. I was like, okay. So I waited a whole fucking week. I pulled up. Same guy. And I go, I'm, I'm here for a small. It's a, it's a 10.45. Surely you're done with lunch. Surely you're open. He goes, mm, uh, my business partner, he's going to be a late. You want a small? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, come back uh, tomorrow. And I was like, what? Hey, hey! <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, come on. How many times I gotta come here to get a smog, man? I, the money I'm coming here wasting in gas is almost the same amount as my smog. Stop it. Come on. So, third time's the charm. I pull up and I was like, it's one of fucking clock. Your lunch is over, bitch. It's past 10 a.m. Give me the fucking smog. He's like, uh, you want a smog? And I was like, yes, I want a smog. Please. <laughs> he goes, ah, okay, okay. And then I was like, oh, thank God. So he's like getting in my car, setting the little smog machine up or whatever and doing things. And he goes, is the car on? Is the car on? And I was like, yeah, it's a Prius, bro. It doesn't make noise. It's on. He goes, okay, okay. And then 
he turns around and I don't know what the fuck happens but he somehow grabs the roof of the car and tries to like pull himself up out of the car and he falls out of my fucking car he just launches himself out of the car and I was like oh 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 <laughs> I was like are you okay sir he's like ah, ah. <laughs> he's like what he fucking said he said he fucking said that shit Canelo said he said que la chinga su madre (laughs) (laughs) I was like oh 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 my gosh little old Hispanic man you fell out of my car are you okay it's like ah (laughs) (laughs) I was like oh oh my god oh oh damn all right he's like I'm fine I'm fine he's like I chihuahua ifola oh he's like motherfucker (laughs) I'm in complete shock because I didn't have any hands because I had literally come from jujitsu so I, I don't have any pockets. <laughs> and so I was holding all the information in my cell phone and my keys. And so he starts to fucking pull himself up out of the seat. I don't know if the car was too low or what was going on. But as he starts to launch himself up out of the seat, I see his foot kick out and slip. And he just fucking falls back in slow motion. Ah! <laughs> Madre. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, 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 he fell so low, I was like, She probably didn't grow up and she worked. She probably got every day for email twerk and taking her clothes off. Oh, she naked. ATL shot it on this big D. <laughs> and Shotty went low, 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 low. <laughs> oh, God damn it, man. This guy fucking fell. And I couldn't save him. I mean, When I say he launched himself out of my car, like he did like a reverse pull up out of my car. And as he pulled himself up, his feet slid out and he just bottomed out and his fucking like ribs fell on the frame of the door and his head hit the seat and the steering wheel. I mean, this guy shit whipped himself. I was like, where can I be going? I was like, please don't die. I need a smog, man. I don't want to have to fucking come back here again. <laughs> Not for the longest time, bitch. So, uh, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's like, you passed, you passed. Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, so while I was waiting to pay he (laughs) this is fucking gnarly yo as I was waiting to pay I was at his shop so apparently he has a smog station and then he like fixes cars but this is in the worst neighborhood in San Bernardino so right next to his shop is a chop shop i'm convinced it's a chop shop because there's all these random parts and these sketchy looking kids and there's no windows there's just cameras outside and i'm like oh this is some shit out of the shield y'all running drugs back there there's a chop shop they have all these brand new car parts bumpers tailgates all kinds of shit back there right so and there's a little camera and there's no windows i'm like y'all up to some shit so and they just sit there. They don't talk to nobody. And then somebody randomly pulled up. They're like, "Hey, hey, 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 hey! Don't come here! Don't come here, man! Don't come here! Don't come here! Not right now! Not right now!" Hey! And the dude got out of the car and then got back in and fucking floored it, man. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, something, something's up next door." So anyway, little, little Hispanic grandpa. 
He's uh, taking my payment. And uh, while he's taking my payment, he is also working on somebody else's truck. And this truck has no fucking engine. Like, he's ripped the engine out. He's doing something to it. So, I don't know what happened. But in the process of him waiting for my payment to go through, he came back to the truck and started working on the truck some more. And then, I guess, the credit machine beeped or something like that. And as it beeped, my man's hand slipped with the wrench. And he hit something, and then this mysterious, <laughs> this fucking mysterious gas just started spraying everywhere. <laughs> and he's like, ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> This mysterious white gas. I need somebody who knows cars. Please tell me what the fuck could have possibly come out of this car, because... I was inhaling this shit. All it did was just like there was this mysterious gas everywhere. And then the fucking gas got sucked into the industrial fan and was just blowing everywhere. And I was breathing the shit in. I was like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, ah, <laughs> I guess I, I, I hit something. <laughs> and he go, you do jujitsu. <laughs> he's like, you going to kill me? And I was like, no, <laughs> why? I need a small bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't pass, <laughs> he started laughing. He's like, okay, me the wall. <laughs> He's like, I guess I hit something. I better get back to work. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, man. Fucking wild. The shit you see in the fucking hood. Un- incredible. So many fucking people. We got to go through this list here. People that died this week. Richard Simmons died. Richard Simmons passed away at 76 in his home. Um, Gary! Gary! Gary, where are you? (laughs) That is my favorite Richard Simmons clip of all time from Howard Stern Show. You can just look up. Gary! Gary! Gary, where are you? (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Uh, Richard Simmons died. Then we have... Shannon Doherty from Beverly Hills 90210. My girl passed away. She got the breast cancer stage four. And this is not the first time. I guess she got breast cancer earlier and beat it and was in remission. And then it fucking came back. And I knew when it came back the second time, I said, oh, bitch, you cannot charm your way out of this. <laughs> you were gone, <goner>, Jack. <laughs> oh, shit. But I'm going to miss uh, her from 90210. And uh, she was on Charm, too, as well. God damn it. What a gem. Shannon Dortry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's see. She was 50 fucking three. That is young. That is fucking young, yo. Uh, who else? James B. Skinning. You might not know that name, but you would recognize his face. He was the dad on Doogie Hauser. Hill Street Blues. Little House on the Prairie. 90 years old. Died from dementia. Holy fucking shit. Your brain just turns to mush and you just fucking die. Oh, that's got to be the worst, because that's like a slow death. Like, you're just, like, losing your mind. Ooh. Ooh. No, thank you. They said, they said, if you eat, you know, anti-inflammatory diet, that protects the myelin sheath. And if you're smart, you know, the myelin sheath is what protects the neurons. Because when those little neurons fray, they release these proteins. And if you don't get a good night's rest at night, your brain can't clean out those proteins. And it's Builds up into amyloid plaque. And that's how you get the fucking Alzheimer's, yo. So make sure you get a good, nice rest, exercise, and eat an anti-inflammatory diet. So you don't get the dementia, okay? We don't need that. I'm um, trying to see what else. Oh, and then finally. <laughs> finally, we had a 82-year-old woman from Long Island die. Except uh, for the fact that she actually didn't die. Uh, she was mistakenly... <laughs> <laughs> pronounced dead <laughs> and taken to the coroner's office where uh, she had awoken to be in the coroner's office uh, and, and was inside of a body bag. That's right. This bitch, 82 years old. They thought she died and they fucking zipped her up 
toe tagged her, took her to the coroner's office, came ready to take her to the funeral home, and the bitch unzipped herself. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Johnny. <laughs> oh my God. Boop. Three, six, nine. Damn, yeah, fine. <laughs> this bitch came back from the dead. She said, no. Not, not today. <laughs> not today, Satan. <laughs> I want to know who's the motherfucker that pronounced her dead and then check her pulse. Like, what the fuck? People that are living have a pulse. And I'm pretty sure this bitch was not dead when they put her in the body bag. What the hell happened? <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is some bullshit from Mexico. These little stories I be reading because this always happens all the time <laughs> in like Mexico or Venezuela. No, Long Island, New York. <laughs> fucking g was still alive and they put her as in a body bag, yo. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine? She's like... Hello, get me out of here! Hello, hello, I'm still alive. Hello. Maybe she's like looking for the fucking Mexican small guy. Ah, ah. Help, help! Get a chinga su madre! That fucking killed me, man. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this bitch died getting out of my Prius. <sighs> Holy shit, man. All right, y'all. I must, I must, I must end the show. Um, it is 90 degrees inside my house because I have to turn off the AC and all fans to do this podcast. So I am fucking m- 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 melting. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Rambopradio.com industrialistbrand.com please pre-order your who's gin uh, rash card if you would like it for the gym or uh just to uh have as a collector's item because it is a custom one of a kind and will never be made again and it is who's gin in mario font that's right check out my instagram i have it posted up there I will talk to you this week because <laughs> that's my punishment. Uh, I, I was not able to get a show to you in time, so I guess I got to give you two. So I will probably talk to you at the end of this fucking week. Um, but until then, this is Rambo Radio. I'm out. Peace. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. You have mental problems. You have some... You need attention, you need something.